In other words, if we value all service to benefit the state, then all service must have an equal value. A doctor has the same value in society that a garbage collector would. A teacher would have the same benefit to society as the person who's picking the groceries that are being sold in a supermarket. Everybody has the same value in order to make the, the, the state work to its optimum benefit. Because philosophically, all service benefits all people, but how the state values that service varies across the spectrum of ideas. Since some services were less valued, those tasks didn't get done. And because those tasks didn't get done, there was no possible way that the communist idea and ideal and utopia, the furtherance of those goals, was almost a near impossibility. A second problem that, um, with the humanistic idea is that you have philosophers like Corliss Vermont and Carl Sagan who believe that serving others must be based on the individual and common good with no consideration toward metaphysical or, or such beings. The idea is to engage with what is human, not what is supernatural. So the ultimate goal is to make life better for all humans, and since we're also the most conscious, conscious of species, that we promote concern for welfare of other sentient beings and the planet as a whole. Again, it goes back to the idea that humanists believe that all human beings are inherently good. But there's a problem with that. The problem is that as we learn how humans, human beings are developing, science is teaching us that we're actually hardwired in many cases in our brains. From the time we're born, many of the traits of, in our personalities are already beginning to start developing. And sometimes they lend themselves to both positive and negative behaviors. We all look at a baby and say, oh gee, you know what, it's really cute. But what we really know by, with science is that the child's ability to learn and perceive ideas and whether it's going to be a positive influence on society or negative, it has already been developed. It's already hardwired. So the idea that you're inherently good sounds good, but it isn't necessarily so. But even if the basis of that idea were intact, the belief assumes that the human is interested in the concept of service towards others, but is not necessarily compelled to serve. How many times have you been on a project and you worked like a dog on that project, whether it was at work or whether it was you know, for a nonprofit or whatever, and then you had that one person on the committee that just didn't work very well. Okay. They added numbers and one plus one came out to four in her world or his world. You know, just not a really sharp tool. So what ends up happening is, is that because they're not compelled to serve, humanism leaves ultimately leaves us to determine whether we wish to serve or not. And without that compelling ability that the Judeo-Christian perspective gives us, without that ability to compel our hearts to serve, we become <laughs> volunteers. We're sitting there watching the Rams game while the doorbell is ringing, in other words. Okay. So what we're left with in our conclusion is that the Judeo-Christian faith requires each of us to serve just as Christ did. And a servant places the needs of others ahead of their own by using the power they have for the benefit of others. Um, some of you have heard of Gail Sayers, the running back for the Chicago Bears in the 1960s. 
probably one of the greatest running backs until he was injured. And he wrote a book called I Am Third. I don't know if I am third. Arachi Yegort Yerort. I am third. Yerorten. Okay? Who's first? Family. Who's second? Friends. Who is third? He is. His is the example that he chose because others helped him. His late friend, Brian Piccolo, was the one, after he was injured, that helped to rehabilitate him. Anybody who has seen the movie with James Caan and Billy Dee Williams, Brian saw, is about that relationship. It was the service that Brian Piccolo gave to Gail Sayers that ultimately changed Sayers from someone who was used to taking to someone who was giving. Now, what we do with the power that is given to us determines the contributions we make in this society. The more contributions that we make in our community lifts our level of greatness. This is where the title of my piece comes in. When we serve, we become great, not from an egotistical standpoint, but from a community-based perspective. And it doesn't matter whether you take ego or not. I, one of the things that my dad used to always say is he says, if any of you kids get the idea of naming a building after me, I'm going to take away all your money. I don't want you to name anything after me. Okay? I only am here to serve. That's it. My friends, we have a choice each day. We may wake up what could be the last day we live and how we leave this world when it's time to leave. As a people, we ought to be compelled to serve because of the talents that God has given us. These talents when you put them all together, allow this world to be a better place. Even if that part of the world is really small. The one thing I used to say in, in, uh, in various deacons meetings is that it doesn't matter the organization we help, it doesn't matter whether that community person is across the street or across the country. If that person is in need, and he is or she is willing to accept that help, we ought to be able to provide it. But many never opt to serve. They consider the situation and they say, I'll become a servant one day when I've achieved my goals or objectives, or maybe when the kids are grown up, or maybe when I've taken care of my responsibilities, or maybe if I have time. When we hold that attitude, we will never, ever live up to the potential of serving, truly serving others. The mission of serving is waiting for you to take up the mantle and help others. For the last couple of years, I've been teaching our kids about service in Sunday school. Last Memorial Day at our picnic, they each took turns helping the adults in setting up the yard for the annual picnic. And just a few weeks ago, they came to church on a Saturday. They not only cleaned everything, but they painted their classroom. They understand that serving is a way for them to grow their faith and experience the greatness that only serving can provide. For the community, we reap the talents our kids have in serving others. And the simple fact of the matter is that the greatness in serving others is the greatest legacy that we leave to our community and is the evidence of goodness in our world today. <laughs>